Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This week we're taking a look at AMG's take on the new Mercedes S-Class. With V8 hybrid power and shed loads of tech, is it enough to take on the mighty Bentley Flying Spur? We also have the 2023 Kia K5 and a new Genesis looking to take on the best from Europe. Plus, some two-wheeled action with the new Motor Guzzi V100 Mandelo. That's all coming up, but first the news. General Motors has pushed back its 2023 EV target by six months due to ongoing battery production issues. According to GM CEO Mary Barra, hiring and training new employees at the company's EV battery plant in Ohio had taken a little longer than expected. GM had originally announced plans to produce 400,000 electric vehicles by the end of this year, but that figure is now expected to be reached in mid-2024. With multiple electric models across GM brands and new ones on the way, it's an ambitious but feasible target. And with models like the Chevrolet Bolt already selling well in North America, GM already has an 8% stake in the USA's EV market. With the Optima now consigned to the pages of saloon car history, Kia has a new mid-size saloon for the North American market to eke out the last sales in the sector before SUVs complete their takeover. Called the K5, it's modern, filled to the brim with tech, and let's be honest here, really quite cool. In a class dominated by Toyota Camrys and Nissan Altimas, the 2023 K5 really does look a lot more appealing with its flick daytime running lights and low menacing front end. And the good looks continue to the back too, where you'll find a full width rear light inspired by the Stinger but bolder and some smart chrome trim. Step inside and the smart interior more than lives up to the car's good looks. It's laid out simply, but it remains a very classy cabin with plenty of wood trim and leather options. It gets a leather wrapped steering wheel too and a big 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster with different themes to choose from. Other cool features include the heated front and rear seats, some ambient lighting and a wireless phone charger. Crucially, the K5 is as practical as anything else in this class. There's plenty of luggage space and taller adults will be perfectly comfortable travelling in the back where you find plenty of legroom. On the infotainment front, as standard you get an 8-inch touchscreen with higher spec cars, getting a bigger 10 and a quarter inch unit instead. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included, as is a function that allows you to pair two phones at once. From launch, there was just one engine on offer, a 1.6-litre petrol putting out 180 horsepower. Now, though, Kia has expanded the range with a new 290 horsepower 2.5. These top-spec GT models also get all-wheel drive, meaning it should be a match for any driver-focused rivals. For the 2023 model year, Kia has added plenty of standard features across the range with prices starting at a smidge over $25,000. The car the Kia really needs to beat though is this, a stalwart of the class, the Toyota Camry. One of America's best-selling cars and by far the most popular in this class, the Camry is a well-established saloon with some very loyal buyers. It may not be the most exciting car to look at, but its blend of practicality, equipment and durability make it a tough competitor for Kia's new kid on the block. The Camry offers a more diverse range of powertrain options, available with either a frugal but gutless four-cylinder, a much better hybrid system or a torquey V6. 
It's a lot better than the last generation car, especially with the 301 horsepower V6, which offers silky smooth power delivery and decent performance as well. Inside, the Toyota doesn't feel quite as upmarket as the Kia. Of course, it's well made, this is a Toyota after all, but you'll need to stump up for the higher trim levels to get the same level of luxury. Toyota's infotainment system also leaves a little to be desired. It does now come with CarPlay and Android Auto, but the system is not quite as slick as the one in the K5. There is plenty of room throughout and luggage space has been greatly improved over the old one thanks to the relocation of the hybrid model's batteries from the boot floor to underneath the rear seats. As good as the Toyota is though, it's the Kia that wins this duel. It may not be as diverse with just two powertrain options, but it looks exciting inside and out and oozes quality and class. It's more desirable than the Camry and we hope it will convince buyers to stick with saloons for a little while longer. It's hard to believe that the iconic Italian sports bike brand Moto Guzzi is over 100 years old. Often overshadowed by its Italian rivals at Ducati and Aprilia, it's easy to forget the brand's success, particularly in motorsport, where it conquered 14 world championship titles and countless speed records. All this in a small factory on the side of Lake Como, where each motorcycle is crafted by hand to this day. Now owned by the Piaggio Group, Moto Guzzi continues to go from strength to strength with a new factory and museum currently under construction. It is clear that the brand is in safe hands for the next century too. And this is the latest creation from the Lake Como factory, the V100 Mandello Sports Tourer. V in reference to its engine configuration, 100 in reference to 100 years of Moto Guzzi and Mandello, the town in which every Moto Guzzi has been made. The bike was revealed at the recent Eichma motorcycle show and is unlike any sports tourer we've seen before. For starters, its seating position is lower than many other rivals in this class at 815 millimeters, a change that Guzzi say allows the V100 to ride like a roadster with the traveling vocation of a tourer. However, this new part roadster, part tourer concept isn't the main point that Guzzi is trying to push. Instead, the innovation that is being endorsed is the all-new Adaptive Aerodynamics, the first bike in the world to offer such a system. This allows parts of the bodywork to move, namely on the side of the tank, where deflectors deploy at a certain speed to divert the elements away from the passengers, a system that Gutsy says reduces air pressure on the rider and pillion by 22%. While in practice this seems like a great idea, in reality the system's benefit is relatively limited, only deflecting air from the waste area. What is better is the windscreen, which moves vertically to move air over the rider, a handy feature for a long distance sports tourer. It's not just the aerodynamics that are new, its power plant has also been developed from the ground up. Not only is it the first liquid-cooled engine to come out from Mandelo, it's also Guzzi's smoothest, quietest, cleanest and most powerful block to date. The all-new 1042cc motor puts out 113 brake horsepower and is significantly shorter, lighter and punchier than the outgoing engine Guzzi used to frequent. So what's it like on the road? 
Well, despite its bulky and bulbous appearance, the V100 handles and rides superbly thanks to its aforementioned lower seat and the more compact engine configuration. Its riding position is also spot on, with high bars that face naturally towards the rider and the seat shaped in a way as to support the rider under acceleration. The fact that the engine is shaft driven is a great plus for maintenance, especially on long journeys, and the four riding modes ensure every rider is comfortable on the V100. So, how much does all this cost? At close to 16 grand, the V100 is on the pricier side when compared to its Japanese rivals from the likes of Yamaha, Honda and Kawasaki, although it is a clear step above those models in terms of build quality and riding experience, and it's less brutal and sporty than models from Ducati and BMW. It's tough to decide where the V100 sits, being between a Roadster and a Tourer. But what is for sure is that it's great to see smaller brands bringing forward big ideas. After the break, the new flagship saloon from AMG. Coming up, AMG's new V8 S-Class, but first... Still relatively new to the UK, Genesis is slowly but surely beginning to make its mark with a variety of posh SUVs, EVs and saloons. But elsewhere in the world, Hyundai's luxury sub-brand has garnered a solid reputation for slightly more affordable alternatives to the more obvious choices. But if Hyundai wants to conquer the European competition on its own turf, it will need to bring its A-game, especially in the impenetrable executive saloon class, dominated by the likes of Mercedes, BMW and Jaguar. This is the G80, a big four-door going up against XFs and E-classes in its own unique style. See this rolling into the business centre car park and there will be no mistaking it for anything else. With its split headlights, chrome mesh grille and lavish winged bonnet emblem, the Genesis stands out. The long bonnet and coupe-like silhouette add some extra sophistication as well, but it's on the inside where the G80 really impresses. Step inside and you're cocooned in a leather-lined cabin that is every bit as classy as its formidable rivals. The wood is real and there's an abundance of leather if you step up from the pleather upholstery in the base spec model. Genesis has been careful to ensure the fit and finish are up to scratch too, while the widescreen infotainment system looks every bit as slick as you would expect in this class. However, Genesis isn't the only left field option in this rather staid part of the market. This is the Lexus ES, a car that we like rather a lot. Fresh from a midlife overhaul, the ES doesn't look all that different than before, with just a new grille and narrower headlights marking it out. The engineers instead concentrated on the chassis to make the new ES more comfortable and better to drive. It gets some updated suspension, which Lexus says has made the car more predictable, especially at high speed. The ES was always a relaxing car to drive, but Lexus has tried to refine it even further with incredible attention to detail. For example, the electronic braking system has been recalibrated and the brake pedal itself is now slightly bigger, with more bracing around its mount to reduce vibrations to your foot. 
the door mirrors on top spec Takumi cars have been replaced with cameras as we've seen on numerous EVs. Sadly, the integration here isn't the slickest, with the pictures being fed up to a pair of rather incongruous screens mounted on the A-pillars. Like the Genesis, the ES gets just one engine option. A 2.5-litre four-cylinder petrol motor hooked up to an electric motor and battery pack for a combined 215 brake horsepower. Sadly then, it lacks the broad range of engine choices you get in its German rivals, and it's also somewhat lacking in performance. Nor to 62 takes a casual 8.9 seconds onto a very modest top speed of 112 miles per hour. It is economical though, returning up 54 mpg. As likeable as both the Lexus and Genesis are then, it still feels like the Mercedes, BMWs and Audis of this world could offer more complete packages. We're glad though to see so many interesting saloon cars on offer, despite the surging popularity of SUVs. For most people, a limousine is a car to be driven in. You ride in the back and let someone else worry about the business of driving. There is, however, a small minority of wealthy limo buyers who prefer to sit up front and manhandle their large saloons themselves. And now there's a new luxury Mercedes specifically designed for those people. It's called the S63, AMG's take on the latest S-Class. Last year we got our first look at the new AMG C-Class and were disappointed to find the famous V8 power plant had been ditched in favour of a hybridised four-cylinder. Thankfully that's not the case here. The S63 thunders along with a twin turbocharged V8 under the bonnet, which combined with its own hybrid system produces a mighty 791 brake horsepower. The engine alone produces just over 600 horsepower, with the rest coming from a rear-mounted electric motor powered by a 13.1 kilowatt-hour battery. In electric mode, the plug-in S63 will manage 21 miles of range. Impressive, but it's not close to being the most impressive figure on this car's spec sheet. That accolade must surely go to the acceleration. This 2.6-tonne limo can do the 0-62 sprint in just 3.3 seconds, on top of a top speed of 155 miles per hour, or 180 if you go for the optional AMG driver's pack. Power is sent to all four wheels via a nine-speed gearbox with a limited slip diff at the rear. There's also a separate two-speed transmission at the back, which shifts up at just under 90 miles per hour to improve the electric motor's efficiency. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to clever engineering. The battery is cooled and regulated with a liquid cooling system, and there are four different stages of energy regeneration to choose from as you're driving. On top of the regen settings, there are seven, yes, seven driving modes. The one we're really interested in, though, is Sport Plus. This is the maximum attack mode that tightens up the steering, firms up the suspension and increases throttle response, allowing you to make the most of that magnificent engine. Marking the 63 apart from a standard S-Class are some redesigned bumpers, a new grille and four brazen tailpipes, delivering the noise. Otherwise, it's business as usual. The cabin is among the very best in the world, packed to the rafters with the latest and greatest technology, most of which is operated via the central portrait infotainment screen. However, the S63 isn't the only limo that you might want to drive yourself. 
This is the Bentley Flying Spur Speed, a six liter brute in a suit with comfort and power in equal measure. The W12 engine produces 626 brake horsepower. Now that's less than the Mercedes, but there's no hybrid powertrain here. Drive is sent to all four wheels, allowing this mobile stately home to hit 62 from rest in 3.8 seconds onto a hilarious top speed of 207 miles per hour. Where the Bentley really shines, though, is on the inside. Full of wood, leather, and various bespoke speed badges, the cabin of a flying spur is a truly wonderful place in which to find yourself. Neither of these ultra-fast, ultra-luxurious saloons makes a great deal of sense in the real world, but we're awfully glad manufacturers are still taking the time to build them. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the new Audi RS3 Performance Edition.